Okay, I wasn't going to see Spider-Man Homecoming. I thought one Spider-Man was plenty. The second Spider-Man was fine, but we didn't need a second. And now the third Spider-Man to roll a bit to the MCU, the Marvel Comic Universe. Ugh. But everybody on Facebook is saying, oh my God, Tom Holland is great. This is the best Spider-Man. I love it so much. So I am going to see it for myself. Well, that was tremendous. Oh. Hands flock at an unpredictable interval. I really enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming. Wow, you know, it's a Saturday afternoon, nothing to do. I thought I'd go catch a catch an early show. You know, I got one ticket to a nice reclining seat. And I thought, who gives a shit about all this? But I really, really enjoyed it. Is it the best Spider-Man ever? I don't know. I think the first one that uh, with Tobey Maguire that uh, Sam Raimi did like 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Really good, really nailed it. But all that Green Goblin stuff, I'm not a comic book fan. I don't know, it seems a little silly. Whereas this one is really kind of more in the in the Avengers universe. The villain was Michael Keaton, who you know from the trailer was fantastic. And he's kind of Birdman, but he's like evil Birdman. He's the vulture, apparently. In kind of a mechanized suit. A lot of, a lot of kind of Tony Stark technology that is sort of uh, up for grabs. A lot of people are using here. The new Spider-Man suit is cool. It's got some Tony Stark technology in it too. And that's a weird thing. With all the stuff Tony Stark has invented, like artificial intelligence, with all the stuff he's invented, why are our lives not more futuristic? Well, because it's made up, that's why. Of course, I understand that. Anyway, I liked this film a lot. It was funny. It was action-packed. You cared about the guy. He's, he's, he's like a, a kid. He's a young kid. He's supposed to be 15. He's, uh, I think he's actually 19. But he's just a, kind of a little twerp. But I, but I get it. It makes sense. They also made Aunt May, who's supposed to be a little old lady, into a hot 50-year-old Marissa Tomei. Grrr. It kind of mocks the the Marvel comic universe, the MCU, a little bit. There's some great Iron Man gags thrown in there. I don't want to spoil it and tell you too much, but one of the great things I like the most is there's no origin story. Here's Spider-Man at the beginning. There's kind of a prologue that harkens back to the stuff you saw in the uh, Avengers um, Civil War, that big battle scene where Spider-Man made a brief appearance with Tony Stark. Like, it sort of assumes you've seen that, but you get, like, a different perspective of all of that uh, at the beginning of this movie, which is kind of fun, just to bring up to speed, I suppose. But no origin story. No need to get bitten by a radioactive spider. That is mythology. That is written. That is understood. But we kind of catch Spider-Man in the time between. He had the shitty spider suit and the nice spider suit. And in this world, the nice spider suit was made by Tony Stark. Okay, wonderful. I saw it in 3D for some reason. It's the time it was available to see, so that's why I don't really care about 3D. But it was great. It looked great in 3D. All the buildings look three-dimensional. Uh, I don't know if they shot it in 3D, but it certainly looked good in 3D. One thing I liked in this, they've not done any other Spider-Man movies, was uh, Peter Parker's friend group at school are all a bunch of nerds. He's going to kind of a technical high school, a kind of a science math high school, and all of his friends are like the chess club and the debate club and uh, the academic decathletes and all that jazz and they're all a bunch of nerds but they're still like but they're still like a bully but the bully is a nerd bully which I kind of like played by what's his name Tony Revolori who was the lobby boy from the Royal Budapest Hotel he was terrific too and the after credits scene you know how like Marvel films you know you watch some credits and that's great and then there's an after credits scene and like the last uh, Guardians of the Galaxy had like four after credit scenes I think this one has one and then then there's the boring credits at the very end there's another one that I think is my favorite after credit scene of all the Marvel after credit scenes. I'm not going to tell you why, but uh, stick around. There's a lot to like in this film. The only things I didn't like is a bit of uh, really, really outlandish coincidences and sort of idiot plot moments where if only, you know, the characters had just spoken to each other a little bit, horrible things might not have happened at all and, uh, and, and disasters might have been averted uh, if only they had uh, communicated a little bit, you know, communicate, talk to each other. Not playing all cagey and, you know, there are all these super people with superpowers and magical technology. They tend to just sort of not talk about each other. They, they let each other figure it out for themselves as opposed to, like, have, like, take five minutes and just discuss a plan or something. But don't let that body. It was terrific. Go see Homecoming. It's the Homecoming dance. That's the Homecoming, you see. There's a Homecoming dance in there. Anyway, go check it out. Lots of great gags. Lots of good fun. It's probably going to make a hundred zillion dollars this weekend anyway. They don't need my endorsement, but you get the Professor Puppet a five-star endorsement of Spider-Man Homecoming. 
Oh, I also saw The Big Sick and Baby Driver recently, both terrific. All the films are terrific lately. I don't know, maybe I just don't go to ones that, that look like they're not going to be good, but Spider-Man was good fun. I mean, who cares? It's not like it's deep or profound or anything, but it is good fun, especially watching Michael Keaton. But The Big Sick is definitely one to catch, and Baby Driver by Edgar Wright delivers the goods in a big way. Okay, that's it for me. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that jazz. I see you soon.